It's okay to get to your 30s and not be married. If God is on our side, who gonna stop us? Gonna stop the weapons may be formed, but they won't prosper. They won't prosper. When you walk in faith, blessings oh. pop up. We operate in faith. You should watch us. Welcome back to the Brittany the Host podcast. I am your host, Brittany. D well, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not Brittany Daniel anymore. Well, that's crazy. I am Brittany Gold. Shout out to my husband, y'all. I got married. I did a whole life update. So if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you guys hit the button right up here or hit the little tab up here or check out the end of the video or link down below for the video of my life update. Everything that's been going on. One fam, morning motivators, thank y'all for showing up. Like y'all are some real ones. Like when you leave a platform for so long or you've had so many changes, like y'all know I was doing vlogs and all types of like morning motivation. And then I did, you know, so I tried some other content. And when you go through ebbs and flows, of course you lose people, right? You can't, everybody is not going to want to stay and go. And that's totally fine. But the fact that I gave you guys a life update out of nowhere, no promo, no teaser, no nothing. And y'all showed out and showed up like y'all did in the past. Like y'all are some real ones. So I really appreciate y'all for real. So shout out to all my fam, my morning motivators. Um, like I, I was really... I was really like blown away from the love, the congratulations. So if you don't know, if you haven't been following me on Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube, uh, then you missing out on all the updates. So I might spoil them in here, but please go watch that video just to get all of the updates. So this podcast episode is going to be basically answering your guys' questions. You guys have some really good questions. I get these all the time on TikTok. Mostly my TikTok content is like talking about relationships, healing, you know, holding women a little bit accountable because we can be very oblivious to the part that we play in the demise of our relationships. The reason why we got to where we are. That's what happened to me. So in my early 30s, I got to around, I want to say 32 and I was like, dang, you know, I'm beautiful. I'm intelligent, educated. You know, I have been to grad school. I got a degree. I was in a, a career job. Like I didn't need no man financially, which we going we gonna to get into that. We're going to get into this whole I don't need no man stuff. But um, I, I was pretty good on paper, you know, strong, independent. I don't need no man, but I want a man. Had that whole thing going for me and for whatever reason, well, I know the reason now, but I wasn't meeting men who wanted to, wanted the same things that I wanted, right? Um, none of them were wanting to marry me. None of them were trying to be with me for real. Like they would be with me, but they wouldn't be with me. And that's one thing I want us as women, especially to get a little hold of just because we can attract men. And just because we can get a man, because any woman can get a man, but are you attracting the type of man that you want? Are you attracting the type of outcomes that you want in said relationships, right? For me, it was giving AD. Um, so I, I'm going to do a whole other video on this, but you know how on Love is Blind, how AD is like, you know, I keep meeting guys and I'm, I'm doing all the right things. So she thinks, and I'm, we're going to point that out, but... I keep getting the same results. That was me. I kept getting the same results. But then I stopped and I said, I'm doing, it has to be me. I was like, it has to be me. I have to be doing something wrong because I'm the common denominator of all my situations, right? And so I was on social media and I think B. Simone was having a conversation and a beautiful woman named Spicy Mari comes across or she's mentioned I'm not sure if she was mentioned. She comes across my screen and I'm like, I need her. I need help. I need her. <laughs> so shout out to Spicy. So I hire Spicy Mari. And what I love about her program, um, it, it wasn't cheap. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. Like your girl, like here's the thing. We can invest in our looks. We can invest in our crafts and in our jobs and relocating, but we don't really take a lot of time and energy to invest in our mind. Um, and we've doing it more in our bodies. The girlies are back in the gym. We can put ten thousand dollars in our butts. But we tend to not go deep and really invest in the area that brings us a lot of fruit. Now, there's a statistic out there. I don't know if this is true 
or where this came from. I seen it somewhere on the internet. <laughs> it could be real, could be false, but I think it has some validity. And it said that 70% of your happiness is determined by the relationships in your life. Now, it didn't necessarily say romantic relationships, but it said that 70% of our happiness is, is somehow connected to inner some type of personal relationships. So in my mind, I looked at like friendships, romantic relationships, and family relationships, right? Um, anything outside of that, eh, you know, but I thought that that was very interesting. And so I went on a journey to heal. Now, I didn't know I was on a healing journey. I thought I was just going to try to figure out what I was doing to not get no man. <laughs> That's what I thought was going to happen, right? <laughs> I was like something going on let's figure it out so as i'm working with spicy she's asking me all of these questions i had never asked myself didn't know to ask myself and thought i had healed and got over and basically pretty much uh overcame right um because i was happy like i was genuinely happy there wasn't really anything I was missing in my life but that love. Like I wanted a marriage. I wanted a family. Um, so I thought at the time, right? And she just had me dig deep. So a few of the things that came up that I did not know that I was still dealing with and struggling with. Number one was my abandonment issues. Okay. So I grew up. Uh, raised by a single mom and my dad and I's relationship we're really good now but for years off and on like I didn't grow up with my dad I stayed with him when I was 10 for a few months and um it was a pretty okay situation there it really helped me so I can't I gotta give my dad credit like if it wasn't for me moving in with him when I was 10 years old no telling where my life would have been so shout out to my dad like when he was called to step up and step in he really did and he he held it down but we really didn't have much of a relationship until I got uh, became an adult. And even then, I still struggled. Um, you know, we, we had our, you know, we had our moments. We had growing pains to get through. But thank God, we're really good. So I always say, if you don't have a great relationship with your parents now, at this point in your life, give it time. Keep working at it. Set some boundaries. Get some healing. Go to therapy. Um, and hopefully, the relationship can turn around. But anywho... I had abandonment issues. Um, my mother also was a divorced woman. So my stepdad wasn't around. Like he was in my life. He was a great dad when he was there. But then when, you know, my parents got divorced or when they got divorced, he was gone. And so I had this, this, I had adopted this narrative that all men leave, right? And then because of the men that I saw in my life, I also adopted the narrative that you know, most of them cheat anyway, or they're not really going to like stick around. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to really do what they need to do. And in college, I had adopted this narrative, which I found out really, really quick in about like a couple months that this wasn't true. But I adopted a narrative that men didn't have feelings. Like I thought because how men moved, how they, how I saw them treat them, how, you know, our music and media made us, made me feel as a woman that I was so disposable that I was just like, you know, all these, all these niggas the same, you know, I had that kind of mentality. So I started moving with some really masculine tendencies and not on the outside. I think when women hear masculine energy, they think it's a physical attribute when really it's a mental and spiritual and emotional attribute, right? What does masculine energy look like in a in an outwardly feminine woman? Like I still dress like a woman. I still look like a woman. I still wear makeup, weave, hair, nails, all of that. That looks like I'm defensive. It looks like I don't trust y'all ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I will let you close, but not too close. I, it looks like I have control. So maybe I go after a guy, like I choose the guy because if I choose the guy, I'm in control of how much, how close you are. I'm also in control on how I can manip not manipulate in a negative way, but I can steer the ship to make sure that I'm in charge. I don't get hurt. And you keep this guard. And what ends up happening is you're not operating from a healthy place. So you don't attract a healthy situation. 
every single time it's going to end either be you self-sabotaging or you're not even attracting a, a, a healthy enough person in the situation because you're unhealthy. At least that's what was going on with me. That's kind of the gist of everything that I learned from Spicy, like dealing with Spicy and going through her course. And I was just like towards the, like in the middle of the course, deal it, like, you know, having her as my coach, I was like, oh, wow, I got some issues. <laughs> You know, and for the longest, I thought it was the men. I thought it was, oh, it's their fault. Like, you know, I'm good. Like, I'm a good woman. I thought because I didn't cheat and I was all of these things on paper that I was Gucci, right? That's normally how we feel. Like, we feel like if if we're not uh, shady, we're not using you for your money. Like, I love God. And at that time, I was really lukewarm, child. So, you know take that with a grain of salt but just like I was like I was thinking because I was all of these things on paper I was all these things that the world told me I needed to be to be successful I thought I was good so I go through the thing with spicy I realize that there's some issues that I have so I begin to heal I begin to forgive I forgive, you know, my father from having the childhood that I didn't have. I mourn that. You got to mourn the childhood that you that you didn't have. Now, let me know if y'all need me to go in deep. That's like a whole other podcast in itself. But mourn the childhood that you didn't have. Forgive your parents. You know, they were young, possibly human too. I had to have a lot of hard conversations with myself. I had to be honest with myself. I had to take accountability on the actions and the people that I allowed in my life. Because here's the thing, no matter who has hurt you, you know, outside of sexual assault or something extreme, right? I'm not talking about extreme case, but if you've just been cheated on or you've been hurt or bamboozled or you dated a narcissist, the list goes on and on, right? Yada, yada, yada. We allowed all of those people into our lives. Nobody can come into your life unless you allow them to, unless you give them the green light. Nobody can date you. Nobody can uh, enter your body again outside of assault. Nobody can force you to do anything. We've made choices. Every single person, good, bad, or indifferent, that has come into our life has been a choice that we've made either willingly or subconsciously or consciously. And we have to take ownership of that. And with with, with this, there's two sides to it. One of it, one is one sucks. One of it is sucks. Like, dang, I did that to myself. You know, because all they did is the action of cheating. All they did was the action of not being honest. They just did the action, but we allowed them in. And then sometimes we allow them to stay. And sometimes we allow them to stay way longer than they should have stayed because we put them above us. You know, I always tell my mentees now. You got to put your respect above your feelings, but sometimes we put our feelings above our respect, right? So once you take ownership of that, which sucks, it's like, oh, it's like a sting. It's like, oh, uh, it, it's the worst. But once you take ownership, you are now in charge of your life. You are now, now you have the reins to do something different. Now you have the gusto to move differently and do things differently for yourself. And you can equip and adapt the tools to make better decisions in the future. So once I did the process with Spicy, I went and got some therapy. Um, I was in uh, maybe one other relationship and a situationship after that. I'm not going to lie because it takes time to change. <laughs> it takes time to 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 do better <laughs> okay so don't beat yourself up it's, it's it takes time to do better but i came to the point where i had done all the healing work on the surface level and on the um on in the worldly aspect because i believe that there's two there's two parts to everything there's practical here on earth and then there's some spiritual work so i did the practical work first excuse me oh Ooh, yes. <laughs> so I did the practical work. That was first. And then I had to do the spiritual work, but I didn't know I needed to do the spiritual work until before this time next, like last year. So once I did all of the, the, the healing work and I did all the forgiving parents, self, um, 
did some therapy, really got started setting my boundaries. One thing my therapist gave me that will save y'all so much time and money is becoming your own best friend. And again, maybe I'll do a whole podcast on that. Let me know down below if you guys want that. If you don't advocate for yourself, if you don't become your own best friend, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage because we can tend to give people so much grace and we allow people so much grace, but when it comes to ourselves, we beat ourselves up, we hold ourselves hostage, we don't, um, like we don't, we don't acknowledge, accept, forgive ourselves, and move on. You know, it's the, why did you do that? Why did you do that? You're so stupid. Like, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. We are our own best friends. So you got to talk to yourself like you talk to your homegirl. Like, you know what, boo, that wasn't probably the wisest decision. And you know, you weren't supposed to call Johnny back. But you know what? It is what it is. Like, we just not going to do it no more. And then you hold yourself to those boundaries and standards to keep yourself safe. OK, we got to understand to hold ourselves and hold our boundaries to keep us safe. That is super important to your growth. So once I did the practical work, then I now this is something I didn't know was going to happen because I did not plan this. This was God. This is how God can work in you. Right. So I gave you guys a short synopsis on the, the life update. Go watch that. But once I started really getting into the focus of being a godly woman and not for a husband, not for anything else, but just to try to honor God. And of course, like I've always wanted to be married. So the desire didn't go away, but I had to change my perspective on why I was doing the things that I was doing. Because here's the thing, you can't play God. And what I mean by that is like, you can't be like, all right, God, I'm gonna do this so I could get a husband. Like you can't manipulate it. You can't manipulate your way into a blessing. The way we normally get blessings is through our obedience, right? Is doing the things that God has called us to do. However, it doesn't even, you don't know God's timing for your life. And I wanted to go over a few things because I got a lot of questions on my last video, but I wanted to give you guys a few points before I answer some of your guys' burning questions about, um, you know, my situation. But it's okay to get to your 30s and not be married. I want that to be like really understood just because you're 30 does not mean that you're ready for marriage either. Um, and I'm not here to tell y'all to wait as long as I have. I know that there are some young women like shout out to Maya Graves. First of all, she's a content creator. She's 21, two kids married, holding it down as a wife. There is no way in Ham Smith that I would have been able to do that at 21. I wasn't mature enough. I wasn't wife enough. I wasn't ready enough. She is killing it. You know, so I'm not telling you that you need to wait into a certain time. I truly believe that if it's meant for you, and this is, hold on, I got to caveat this. Let me say this and then I'm going to caveat. If it's meant for you and you are ready and God knows that you will not fumble the blessing, because that's another thing. Like we always say that if it's meant for you, it'll be for you. You got to be prepared and you got to do the work because I do believe that you can fumble a blessing personally right but God in my personal opinion he only gives you what you're ready for and so if you're not ready to be married if you're not a wife if you don't have the mentality to put somebody else before yourself when I was 21 I was way too selfish way too selfish to be a wife right um, so everybody has their journey. So I want my, my women, my ladies, that's why my third, I think my 30 single, no kids video is so popular and has so many views because when people get to 30, they freak out. And it's like, I get it. <laughs> I understand, but always remember you might not be ready. And what you don't want to do is get a blessing out of order because if you get a blessing before it's time, it can be become a burden. What ends up happening is a lot of people freak out when they're 28, 29, 30, and then they settle. That was almost me. I ain't going to lie to you. Then you almost settle because you think that, well, if I don't do something, then nothing's going to happen. And you end up settling for the wrong person. That's why a lot of women in their 30s end up becoming baby mamas. No shade. But it happens because people try to take the reins into their own hands instead of doing the work. 
it's harder to wait. And by the grace of God, oof, by the grace of God. So I'm not blaming or judging anyone, but just because you turn 30 does not mean that you're ready, but you can prepare. And, and just because like I, it's, it's, it's that 30 mark with women, right? I got married at 34, pregnant at 35. Um, wasn't a perfect pre pregnancy, but a pretty healthy one to, to say the least. So I'm not saying wait, but I'm also saying take the pressure off yourself. Do the work to get ready for what you're asking God for. If I wouldn't have done the work, I would have missed my husband 110 percent because I wasn't the woman of God I needed to be. I did not have the mentality I, I needed to have. I was not healed the way I needed to heal. It's very important to be aligned with what you are asking God for. You have to be ready for the blessing, especially a true kingdom marriage that is really stands firm on a solid God foundation. You have to be ready for that. It's a lot that comes with it, not only in the physical realm, but spiritually. Just because you're 30, you might not be ready. Another thing I wanted to say is take marriage off of a pedestal and focus on your personal growth, healing and relationship with God. One thing God revealed to me prior to me meeting my husband is I, you know, I was getting delivered. I was doing all these great things. I was honoring God. I was really on my, my journey, my purpose. I fasted. I did all the things. Um, but I think it was either somebody said this during a service. I think it was my homegirl, Carrie. She was like, she was like, you need to take marriage off of a pedestal and put it on the altar. And some people know what that means. But what putting something on the altar means is giving it up to God. Like if you're stressed out, put it at the altar. If you worried about your kids, put it at the altar. You worried about your marriage, put it at the altar. If you worried about anything, you, uh, the Bible says, cast your, cast your burdens upon me. God wants to put whatever you're worried about, whatever you're fearful about, he wants you to give it up to him. However, God doesn't want us to idolize anything. And I think at one point I idolized marriage. Here's the thing about idolization. If you idolize anything, you there could be a possibility that you could love that and honor that more than God. God doesn't want to compete with nobody, not even your children. That's just not how he operates. So he knows that if he has you in a certain season and you're loving him and you're chasing him, but if he gives you a husband that you're going to forget about him and focus on your husband only, you're not going to focus on your purpose, you're not going to do nothing because marriage is about God. It's not about us. And that's where we go wrong. We think that marriage is about us and our happiness. And oh, if I get this and if I get a husband to do this and then no, 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 no. Your marriage is to glorify the kingdom of God, period. Now, the byproduct of, of, of doing that is happiness and all the extra stuff, you know, doing it with no sin. And, you know, there's there you get benefits from being married for sure. But marriage is to glorify God, period. So if you are not in a headspace where your marriage is, you're prepared to take on that covenant to glorify God, it's cool. Every, it ain't for everybody. Paul says be single like him. Everybody is not called to marriage. Everybody is not called to marriage. It's like everybody ain't called to motherhood, but we, we God gives us free will. So marriage, marriage to the right person is beautiful. Married, being married to the wrong person is hell. And you don't want to end up there because there's too many people online telling they sob stories about their marriages. But my personal opinion from just me watching these stories is if you go to the root, nobody prayed, nobody asked God if that was who they were supposed to be with. You know, I think that that's why people get into these situations. You have to bring God along the process. You have to be, you have to let it go so much that no matter how you feel about a person, you're willing to put God's will over whatever you want. I feel like that is super important, but prior to getting married, because if you hold on to this man or you hold on to this idea of marriage or you smother it and collect it like infinity stones, you will possibly miss out who like your your true situation. Because counterfeits come right before your blessing. That's just been my personal uh, thing. OK, third thing is to date slash court the way God says, not the way the world says. 
One thing my husband and I did is we did not date. Okay. We, some people could call it courting, but I was very clear that I did not want another boyfriend. I was 34. I was like, I'm over it. I don't need no more boyfriends. That whole boy. And if you really think about it, if we really dated God's way or got to know somebody God's way outside of, we ain't supposed to be in the bedroom. That's where a lot of us be messing up is we go to that bedroom. We'd be trying to be all romantic, humping and dumping, doing the most getting our feelings all involved, eyes crossed, legs in the air. And then we get caught up with soul ties and, and, and bonding with someone that you were not supposed to be with, right? So if we did things God's way and we took sex completely off the table, what is the difference between boyfriend and girlfriend and being friends? Like, what's this fake title about? It's not honored by God. To me, what it does is it, pro it prolongs your marriage. Like one thing I can I can definitely say when I was studying with the Nation of Islam is they courted and you court to get married and you get married. There's no dating. It's like you intentionally get to know someone and you ask all the questions. You're very, very intentional. And I think that my husband and I did that. We were just not calling it anything like he was never my boyfriend. We went from friends to fiance. Like, why do we need all these little artificial titles that mean nothing? And then we get caught up on, oh, we got to move in together. And then we got to sleep together. And so many people get caught up on, like, I got to live with this person before I, I get married to them. I just got to know where I got to test drive the car. God didn't tell us to do none of that. We think we know better than God. And that's how we get messed up. God already gave us a set of instructions on how to do this thing. All we got to do is get to know these people, get to know them. If, if they like it, then they're going to put a ring on it. If y'all are on the same page and I'll get more in detail with more podcasts about how to go about these things, questions to ask and all of that. But if we got really intentional with wanting to be married or putting marriage like in the, the intent of me getting to know you is to see if you are a match for my kingdom marriage or what God has called me here to be, because I already know my purpose. I know what God has called me here for. If we took all the romance, all the fun, the vacations off the table and you truly got to know somebody, you could weed people out so quick. So quick. But we think we're smarter than God and we think we our rules trump his rules. So then we end up sleeping together, moving in together, living together, having kids. And then we crying about we don't got no ring or we're caught up in a, in a crazy situation that we weren't ever supposed to be in. And then we make up excuses like, oh, well, my babies are a blessing. And all of that might be true. But a lot of people got a whole lot of blessings that they wish they didn't have because of the person that they had them with. Not to say that they want to delete their children. But, you know, they if they could delete their baby daddy, they would. Okay. <laughs> Number four is that I have written down. You have to be ready and be a woman of God if you want a, a man of God. You, you have to really be in obedience, in my personal opinion, at least for me. I get it that people are at different stages and that's totally fine. But I think that there does come a level of consecration, reverence, and understanding to truly have a cohesive situation, if that makes any sense. It's like the Bible talks about building your house on a solid foundation meaning the foundation of god because when you build your house on sand it may fall so being equally yoked not settling in your standards um you know the whole nine and can i talk about the standards thing let your standards be more than how much he spends on you and all the material thing in a lifestyle that bothers me. If you follow me on TikTok, then you know that that bothers me. And I want to say this. I'm not against women having a life that they want. I think that you should definitely go after the life that you want. But sometimes we put lifestyle, money, and certain things on such a pedestal, we forget about character, integrity, morals, and values. A lot of us turn a blind eye to the foundation of a person and the stuff that's really going to make you ultimately happy in a marriage because we're focused on what we can get and what that person has 
And that's going to be a whole nother podcast for a different day because I can go on and on about that. So make sure you're focusing on the character, morals, values as a standard for yourself, along with all the other things. And make sure that man brings you closer to God, not farther away. One thing a counterfeit will do, and a counterfeit is somebody who looks just like a person that you would want to marry. Like the counterfeit be counterfeiting. The counterfeit look like the real deal. The counterfeit look good, smell good, everything good. <laughs> and they be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Will knock you way off of your purpose. So always, always, always pray. If you start like it, I don't care if you, the first day, God, if this is not of you, remove him now, expose him now. Like we are so scared to ask God and pray about things and get rid of things that do not serve us. One thing somebody asked me one time that was really great is they were like, well, what prayer made you know that your husband was for you? I was trying to pray him out my life. Like not on no scary stuff, not on no, oh my gosh, I, I like him so much. I'm scared. Not like that. It was God, if this is not from you, take him now. Like I don't want to go a day longer, like entertaining this man, liking this man, getting to know this man. If he is not from you, if this, if this union is not going to bless your kingdom or make whatever I'm here called to do, if it ain't from you, take it. Like I don't want it. That's how like dedicated I was to that process. And I think you, ha you especially as people of God, like you got to be that intentional, like bump the Sierra prayer. No, you need to be praying people up out your life. Like, Lord, expose it now. Because sometimes we think we hear God and we don't or we ignore the red flags or we're doing all of it. Like when people say, well, you know, he could go to church and still be a man of God. But what does his fruit look like? Because if he's if he's a man of God, but he's sleeping with you. He's not he's not doing and honoring what God has said to do. If he's a man of God or going to church and he's living with you or y'all living together, that's not honoring God. I'm sorry. And, and people going to be do you. I did it. So I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it spade a spade. If you want to do things your way and not honor God, then fine. But there's consequences to doing things like that. And a lot of times the consequences come and nip us in the bud. Just my personal experience. Everybody's different. Everybody ain't going to like that. And that's cool. Um, but just think about that. Like, am I, am I following the way God tells me to follow? And it's not about being perfect. I'm not perfect. I definitely got a lot of work to do. I am not perfect in a lot of areas. But that's the one thing that I've always, when people be like, well, it doesn't matter if he goes to church. and he, But it's normally the fruit of that person is not aligned with who they are called to be. My husband is not perfect by any means, but one thing I love about that man is he always tries to stand 10 toes down on kingdom business. He even checks me sometimes. Like I'd be going back and forth in comments and be trying to turn up on people. And he always reminds me that that is not how I'm supposed to move because I am not highlighting Christ in the right way. Told you all I ain't perfect. I'm working on it. <laughs> you know, so if that man is not honoring the things that God has told him to do and told you to do. I think that that's a that's a telltale sign, a huge red flag, because if we're in our word the way we're supposed to be, if we're praying the way we're supposed to be. And again, there's no right formula to this. But I think that from what I noticed is when I was doing it the way I did, needed to be doing it, stuff was exposed to me. <sighs> OK, <laughs> So I know that got a little heavy. I'm going back up. If you guys have any questions, any comments, concerns, or you want clarity on something, put it down below. We will have another podcast episode. But I did want to go to the comments um, in my last video because there were some really good questions. And I wanted to make sure I answered them because I really appreciate you guys looking out. So this is what I will do. If I post a video or I post a podcast and you guys have questions, put them in the comments and I will go through the comments and answer as many as I can. So Miss Baby Blue 12, what's going on? She said, congratulations. So happy for you. I've been subscribed to your channel for a few years now. Shout out to you. Thank you. Uh, do you have any advice for single women who are in their 30s who desire marriage and children? Um, 
it's okay to desire. We already kind of talked about taking off the pedestal, getting a life right with God, like really walking with God. And if you desire children, you don't have to wait until you are trying to have kids with your husband to make sure that your female reproductive system is intact or is in line. There are so many uh pant like hormone get a hormone panel i did that prior to getting married i checked my egg reserved re egg reserve excuse me you can do that prior to getting married i think i did that with modern fertility when i was 30 and then you can get the hormone panel done at your obgyn you can also get a ultrasound on your on your reproductive system on your uterus your fallopian tubes you want to check your ovaries you want to make sure that your whole system is a go like there's no cysts there's no fibroids because what ends up happening nine times out of ten is a lot of women they're on birth control for years or they have painful periods or they're going through all these things and they just chalk it up as normal or they're placed on birth control and then once they start having kids once they're married they find out that they have some issues going on when we can try to get ahead of this these things before we're married that's the those are the things that i did to prep my body for times like this so i could rhyme like this you know what i mean so i would just make sure um oh and you can get there's an ultrasound like a regular ultrasound like as if you're pregnant but then there's a transvaginal ultrasound where they go inside with a probe and they look around um, most doctors are going to push back on this. They're going to say, you're young, you're healthy, you're not having kids, so we don't need to do this. The doctor works for you. The doctor works for you. If your insurance covers it, put it in, put it in, Pam. I, and you can say, you know what? I understand that. I just want to make sure I'm all systems ago. Please put in the request. Like, I don't know why they'd be trying to debate you and trying to make you stop. For whatever reason, they don't like doing that stuff. But I did got it done because I requested it and I wanted it. And I didn't care it, that I wasn't having kids. Because they'll ask you real quick if you want to um, freeze your eggs without even seeing if your reproductive system is even healthy. You know, and unfortunately, they don't even check to see if your fallopian tubes are blocked until you're like six months into a year into having children with your husband or whenever you're trying to have children. Like, I think they do med med the medical field most of the time does stuff so backwards. There's so many preventative things you can do to ensure that you're good prior to getting married. So I would just get a whole panel on your female reproductive health. Pap smears are not enough. And I would also not get them every three years, even though they're like, oh, you have a, every three years, you're good. You can get one every year if you want to. But pap smears only check for cervical cancer. They don't check your ovaries and your uterus. That is something totally different with the ultrasound outside and then the transvaginal and your hormone panel to check your, thi your thyroid and all of your hormones, your testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone levels. You want to make sure that those are all good. Okay, how did you surrender to God and trust him regarding finding your husband? I just did. I, I got to a point where I was just like, well, if it's meant for me, it's meant for me. If it's not, uh, Lord, I'm still going to serve you and my life is still going to be lit. Don't think, be if, if God, like, what if God said that you weren't meant to be a wife? Are you just not going to like live your best life? I was living my best life. I wasn't sleeping around. <laughs> I had stopped being in the streets, but I, I was living my life. Like I was enjoying myself. I got hobbies. I had friends. I was serving in church. I was so focused on like living my best life and I just was I was hoping that I would draw in love and I was it, putting that out there but I was kind of like it's me and God right now um but I was still like in the world like I'm still outside I still went out I still look good I still had a good time I still had eyes so I still seen the men's but I just didn't really operate at a spirit of desperation I was just like I only wanted what God had for me like I got to a point where before somebody could even get my number I was like do you, are you a Christian? Do you go to church? Do you serve? Like I had a questionnaire and you would think that that would scare some people off, but no, they actually thought that it was pretty cool that I had standards. Um, did you ever get frustrated, angry, or compared yourself to others when you were single, especially when family and friends were getting married and having children? To be honest, no. Um, I know I never, for whatever reason, I always was really pessimistic about 
family and like um and I had friends that had family and I saw how restricted they were like I have Zara Zara is my dog if y'all been here y'all know so I enjoyed my freedom I enjoyed that there were days where I could just lay on the couch and eat eat cereal and I was really excited for friends and people who were getting married and having children and I kind of just didn't I kind of like as much as I wanted those things I was kind of a little self-aware that, hey, I'm okay that I don't have those. Like, my sister has kids. I saw the real, like, sometimes we look at the Instagram and we look at the, like, the pictures and we're like, oh, family. It's hard out here for a pimp when you have family. Like, you don't get to just come and go as you please. You got to find sitters, school, clothing, doctors. Like, I knew, I think because a lot of my friends had children, my sister has kids. I saw the real, I saw the behind the scenes. So I never envied people with children. Did I like some days go, oh, like I want to be a mother or whatever. Yeah, but it was very surface. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like I just want to hear mom. I just wanted to hear at the time, mommy and like the love. And I think that having a dog, I know that there's two creators that kind of make fun of single women with dogs. But I think honest to God, I'd rather y'all get a pet rather y'all get a dog than just to get just to have a child like some people just have kids because they're trying to fill a void or they want that and it's just like no if you want some hugs and some kisses and somebody to love on you get a dog get an animal um because you don't want to create a child or create a family from a place of lack like your your family your children your husband is not there to fill a void for you to make you feel better about yourself that's not what they're there for because if you have children or you get married out of that place of lack you think that it's their job to to fill it and that's where a lot of people go wrong and that's when a lot of people are unhappy in their marriages and their situations because they get into it and they're like oh this ain't all it's cracked up to be no it's work it's a job like no <laughs> so for me no um but I can see how people can do that. But I would just say comparison is a thief of joy. If you are single, enjoy your single season. Because if you don't enjoy your singleness, you're not going to be able to enjoy marriage. You have to understand how to make yourself happy. External things, other like your children. and uh, like You can't use things and people to feel, excuse me, <laughs> to feel something that you're supposed to feel on your own. Okay? Um... Let's see. How did you and your husband meet? We met at my church. I actually have a whole story time. Let me know down below if you guys will want to see that story time. I have a whole story time on how me and my husband met, um, which I was going to post soon. So you guys let me know. Vote down below if you guys want a story time. What tips do you have for those who want to build a strong relationship with God? You want to build a strong relationship with God, get to know who he is. Ask him to reveal himself to you. Pray. Um, and prayer doesn't look like, oh, heavenly father, I come to you. The like, just talk to God like I'm talking to you now. Like, what's up, home? Like, what up, pops? G, whatever you feel comfortable with. Talk to God. I highly recommend getting a Bible that you understand. I have a link down below for an Amazon women's study Bible and an Amazon men's study Bible that I, I love. Um, but read his word and read what God says. I would get in a good Bible based church and like possibly go to attend good Bible studies. Embassy City is a church that I attended prior to getting married. And it was amazing. Like our uh, Apostle Brian Meadows would break the Bible down. So you want to make sure that you're at a church where somebody has some good biblical knowledge and read it, study it. There's so many resources and things out there now. Um, to help you understand what God is calling you to do. I love Proverbs. They always tell you to start in like Matthew, John, or, you know, those books, but I love Proverbs. Proverbs to me gives you a clear cut message on the do's and don'ts. It's the book of wisdom. I love Proverbs. It's my favorite, um, but it's up to you. I would just say it's a very personal journey. Open the book, though, and read the word for yourself. And people are going to say, oh, the Bible's man-made or it's the white man's religion and all of this nonsense. Um, Christianity was in Africa 400 years before the slave trade, by the way. And <laughs> I won't even mention that. Just read the Bible for yourself and ask God to reveal to you where you are. And he'll meet you where you're at. He knows exactly what you need. 
Pray for the, the, the people to come in your life. Pray for the opportunities to meet like-minded people. He will give you exactly what you need, but you have to ask him for it. And last question, she says, also, what activities or hobbies did you participate in in your single season? Child, I was skating. I was coloring. I was going, hanging out with my friends. Um, I think, <laughs> to be honest, black women's, <laughs> according to Jesse Wu, black women's, we have like three hobbies, brunch, shopping, traveling. Like we got to get some more hobbies, like really figure out what something is that you enjoy doing for free. I know a lot of us turn our hobbies into our passion projects, but then we just work 24 seven, but you need something you do outside of making money. In my personal opinion, that brings you life, that brings you joy, that makes you happy. So that if there's ever a time in your marriage or in your life where you're unhappy, you could go make yourself happy by doing certain things. You know, do you like views? Do you like going for a run? Like you have to figure, you have to spend some quality time with yourself to ensure that you know what you need because only you can do that nobody can just sit there and guess you got to know what you need and what you want bless you i think there was somebody else with some more questions but <laughs> my friends are so funny but i think that's all let me see um i think there was something else but I just really want to say thank you to all the well wishes, all of the congratulations to everything that I have going on. Again, if you have not seen my life update, I I didn't spoil I, I kind of spoiled it in this video. But if you haven't seen it, uh, go check out my life update video. It will be linked down below and linked around here somewhere. I love you guys. I hope you guys got something out of this uh, podcast. Let me know down below what other things that you guys want to talk about. Because I can do I do this all the time on TikTok Live. I can do this forever. But hours and hours and hours with y'all. Okay. So I love you guys. You guys have a beautiful and blessed day. And I will catch you guys in my next one. Peace. If God is on our side, who going to stop us? The weapons may be formed, but they won't prosper. When you walk in faith, blessings pop up. Operate in faith, you should watch us.